What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be the spoiler-free review for Chucky Season 3, Part 1, Episodes 1 through 4, which will air beginning next month, October. Um, so in this season, in Chucky's unending thirst for power, Season 3 now sees Chucky ensconced with the most powerful family in the world america's first family inside the infamous walls of the white house how did chucky wind up here what in god's name does he want and how can jake devin and lexi possibly get to chucky inside the world's most secure house all while balancing the pressures of romantic relationships and growing up meanwhile tiffany faces a looming crisis of her own as the police close in on her for jennifer tilly's murderous rampage last season now chucky season three while i enjoyed it i had fun with it it is the weakest of the of the three so far because again this is only part one uh this season does not pick up where season two left off but it will indeed loop its way back to that moment during part one this was honestly just more of the same and that's a little disappointing because we were promised the most scariest season yet and it did seem like we were heading in that direction and don't get me wrong you guys will have fun with this just as much as I did, but even I was baffled by the writing decisions this season. Not in terms of the character development, but in regards to my suspension of disbelief being pushed to the edge. And that's ironic considering I'm watching a show about a killer doll that I will always love and adore. Perhaps the most bizarre writing choices happen when Tiffany is in prison. So you're going to get to see Tiffany in prison during this first volume. And I mean... As serious as prison should be, Chucky makes it seem like a playground and you get one of the most wackiest unserious sequences ever in this franchise. The pacing is hit or miss for the most part, but certain things did seem did seem overly long like a particular strangulation kill and the wacky occurrence at prison with Tiffany. Basically, the chance to lean into terror like we were promised and build suspense are short lived, but the wacky shenanigans get to breathe with no restrictions. Chucky's conflict this season is also completely absurd to me and slightly far-fetched because it's tied to the Voodoo for Dummies book and I was like, wouldn't you have known about this possibility for years, kind sir? Given Charles's Voodoo background, so I wasn't completely sold on this angle. It's something Charles thought he'd never have to worry about is all I'd say. But the tie into the White House was even more peculiar to me. Despite that, this season does a great job capturing a first family that presents themselves as flawless to the public. And then behind closed doors, we have secrets galore that the public would never know about. We even have these jabs at just the political climate we are in today. It's nothing that's leaning too far left. It's nothing that's leaning too far right. It's right down the center which lines up with some other details you will learn about the collins family that's all i will say we have in, in regards to the secrets we have collins oldest son grant who's doing drugs with, a, with one of the secret service members president collins and first lady charlotte do drugs as well but there's more secrets you'll see when this season airs definitely has a curse of chucky vibes the very second the season starts but then it vanishes leaving us with another season that is just more camp less terror and while i enjoy the camp the child's play fan of me was hoping mancini would deliver on his word and so far we have not gotten that however a specific fake out sequence completely had me gagged and shattered my heart it was the most well shot sequence in the season for me and i was completely sold it was probably the highest dose of tension present this season and it completely shattered my heart until i found out it was a fake out thank god for lexi devin and jake because the collins are nothing more than unrelatable but interesting elites that while well written they just are not the most likable characters around so the season isn't relying solely on that family you get a healthy balance of the trio and the first family and yes guys the trio appear in every single episode lexi devin and jake have all have all coped with the Chucky madness in their own separate ways, taking a page out of Devin's book to be more specific, but you'll find out what that means soon. Devin and Jake are ready to have sex, or so they think. Caroline is present for this season. Lexi is hunting for Caroline to find out where her sister is. And of course, Miss Fairchild is back. You will see Miss Fairchild during this season, part one, and so is Nika. Caroline's presence, though, overstayed its welcome once the narrative with her went even further into the land of absurdity that I was completely appalled by this season. Nika's revenge plan on Tiffany, while reasonable, was also underwhelming, but I should have known better. I don't know why I was expecting anything too overly elaborate. It's quite simple and to the point what her revenge was. Um, Tiffany's material so far is entertaining, but again, it just reached a level of absurdity I couldn't get behind. 
uh, the, but the writing around her arc is not completely terrible in any way. It's just definitely not capitalizing on some of the more compelling opportunities it has given her situation. It leans into the camp and clownery more than anything. The practical effects work with Chucky is phenomenal as always with this show and the cast delivers once again too. Jennifer Tilly still excels at playing the fierce, deadly, and highly desperate Tiffany Valentine. Olivia, Bajorvin, and Zachary have wonderful chemistry as always and remain one of the strongest trios in the horror series in a horror series right now since Dewey got gutted by Ghostface. Devin Sawa, as much as his return should have been scrapped, delivers another terrific performance as President Collins. All the newcomers do a good job as well. Sawa's, Sawa's acting chops, they're undeniable. This just isn't an anthology show, and I think we need to stop bringing him back at this point. All in all, it's not like the worst thing ever, guys. I, again, I, I liked it for what it was. I did enjoy it. I had fun with it. And... I don't have a problem admitting that it is so far the weakest of the three seasons for me. The cinematography was fine. I love the callbacks to the Child's Play trilogy and the callbacks to some of the stuff that we saw in the later entries. Yes, there are some cameos, massive ones. <laughs> That's all I'll say. The kills also are very gruesome. One though in particular is a little too over the top. It involves a umbrella being shoved down someone's throat, but you do get a lot of throats being slit also. One in particular, two in particular, I could argue, felt like a callback to a kill at the end of the second Child's Play and the presto, you're dead moment from Child's Play 3 that I know everyone loves. It was a very swift throat being slit. Uh, well, it actually wasn't someone's throat being slit. It was someone having their brains blown out. But I digress. You guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. Right now, I'm going to have to give this season a 6.5 out of 10. I just think it's time for us to find that balance of teetering into the comedy slightly and the campiness slightly while completely just going back to the horrific roots of that first film and the doses of Curse of Chucky and just the other sequels that have the horrific aspects that I think are sadly lacking in this season. Let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description. I have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.